What's going on everybody? Today we are gonna be doing a tutorial on how to do product renders in Fusion 360. Quick caveat, I wanna explain, I typically do a lot of my renders like this for, for this kind of stuff in Blender. I like Blender because it offers a lot of options and a lot more customizability in how you do your renders, but I often will also do them in Fusion 360. So I'm gonna walk you through, I, I actually have a render that I need to make, so I'm gonna walk you through as I make it, and I'm gonna show you how to apply materials to your models, how to adjust some specific scene settings, and a few other tips and tricks for making your renders. So this video will be great if you're wanting to create your renders in Fusion 360, but also it's pretty good if you 3D print or if you create your models into the real world and you want to get a visual of how it may look with the right materials and colors applied before you actually create it. So let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, so to get started, the very first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to the top left where it says design. We're gonna click that drop down menu and we are gonna switch over into our render workspace. Now, this is the workspace where we're gonna give our objects the materials and we're gonna give our scene settings and all that and we're act where we're actually going to take the final image. Um, yours may have this little rendering gallery popped up right here. That's where active renders and finished renders are gonna show up. Uh, but I just click this little minus symbol right here to get it out of our way. So the very first thing that we wanna do is we wanna give our model its materials. So we're gonna open up our appearance menu, which is this little color wheel right here, or you can hit A on your keyboard to bring up the appearance. Looking at this, uh, it says in this design, this is the materials that are currently in the design and the stock material is this steel slash satin, which is already on our object. But we can go down here to the library and there are all sorts of materials already available to us. And typically what I do since we're doing a render of what will be a 3D print is I usually go down to the plastic section, but you can look through, this is where I encourage you to play around and look and you know, just play with these materials because there's a lot of different things that you can do with it. But I usually go down to plastic and to keep things simple for me, usually just to start out, usually what I'll do is I'll just pick ABS white and to apply it to our material, what you do is you just left click it and drag it and drop it onto your item that you want to color with that material. Now, like I said, play around with all these different materials. For me, I usually just start with ABS white and then I duplicate that single color to whatever colors I need because for me, I feel like it's relatively close or at least like somewhat matte. Um, so fairly close to what a 3D print ends up looking like. But play around with these different materials and have fun with it and you know, just uh, see what you can come up with. So like I said, I take this original one and then I'll duplicate it out. So what I'm thinking for this object right here, I'm thinking I'm gonna do red and then white because that's what I'm gonna print it in. So we are gonna take this white right here and then I'm gonna right click it and I'm gonna hit duplicate and then I'm gonna go up to edit and this is how we can edit not only the color, but all sorts of different settings about our material. So first thing, I'm gonna go ahead and rename it um, red, just so I can keep track of that a little bit easier. And then we're gonna drag this over and just change it to red. Um, and we're just gonna do it really simple right now. Um, drag and drop that, and then I'm gonna drag and drop this. And one thing I wanna point out when you're dragging and dropping your materials onto your objects is right here we have apply to bodies or components or you can select apply to faces. So if we have it on faces, then you can apply it to just an individual face. So that's kind of how you can get a little bit more customization, which actually this looks pretty good like that. Um, but I think, uh, I think I'm actually just gonna keep those red for now. So um, we'll go to bodies and then hit remove. Okay, so now that we've got the material applied to our actual object itself, one thing I'm looking at is the red is, they're both a little bit shinier than I think they normally would be. Um, so I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna make them not as shiny. So we're gonna right click uh, and then we're gonna go into edit and you can make it not as shiny by upping the roughness. So if we drag our roughness up, if you look and see, if you're looking at the red, you can see that it's going from shiny to really matte. Um, and I kind of want to find just like a decent little middle ground. So probably somewhere like right around there. So we still want to see like some shadows and highlights a little bit. Uh, and then for the white, same thing. So I'm going to go in, go to edit, and then I'm going to bump up the roughness just a little bit. And this one is a little bit harder to tell, but you will be able to tell whenever we're actually taking the image. 
So we're going to hit done. And then now that we've got our materials for our object, <clears throat> that's kind of half the battle um and i'll repeat it once again but play around with those materials and just have fun with it see what you can come up with there's some really fun stuff especially if you play with like the metal um and within the materials so go into the material settings and play around especially advanced um just go in here and just you know mess with stuff and see kind of you know how it affects things uh, and maybe eventually if anybody ever wants i can do like try to do a little bit more of an in-depth video on the materials themselves uh, but the next thing that we want to do is we want to get our scene settings correct and actually reverse two seconds. I want to just show you one thing really quick. So with this appearance menu right here, uh, we can actually use that same menu in our design environment. So if we go back to the design environment, you can see that our materials are still applied. If you hit A on your keyboard for appearance, you can still you know, change your appearances over in the design environment. So. That's just one thing um, that I wanted to point out, but let's go back to the render environment. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust our scene settings. So for scene settings, I don't think that there's a shortcut set up for it, but you just click this little uh, ball in the, the area. And there's a couple of settings that I wanna point out. So um, one thing that we first, usually it's the first thing that I concern myself with is what the background color is gonna be. And I'm actually gonna show you two different ways to deal with the background color. So, um, uh, let's not worry about that for now. We're gonna jump to that a little bit later even though that's usually my first step. So first thing I want you to look at is our ground plane. So I have it deselected. When we select it, you can see that it allows us to have like a shadow and it shows us that there's an actual ground. Um, and then with this ground plane, there's different settings that you can give it, roughness, uh, you know, position, all that stuff. So if we go up to pos position, for instance, um, which is technically our, our light position. So if we click it and then if you rotate it, you can rotate the way that that light is hitting our object. So that's obviously pretty useful if this is the way that you choose to render, if you want to have a shadow on your object. Uh, but if we go, let me click out of that. Um, and then as far as our camera and our focal length, uh, we've got that setting right here so you can kind of drag this in and out and kind of figure out what type of focal length you want your render to have i typically like mine to be somewhat realistic to what it, it would look like in a photograph or at least close so i'm going to keep it right around i think it started at 82 so we'll keep it there and you can also change the the style of the photo to either orthographic perspective or perspective with ortho faces um, and then you can also have different depth of field, which helps when you have different objects, which we've only got a single object, so it's not gonna make a huge difference right here. Um, and then let's take a look at, let's, let's revisit the concept of the background color. So when we click our background, we've actually, we've got different options. We've got solid color or environment. So if we click solid color, it's pretty straightforward. You know, you can choose any color that you want. And when you hit apply, it'll change it. I just made it like a more, a brighter white. But I think what we're gonna eventually do is like a light blue. I'm, I'm kind of thinking in my head, I think that might look okay. It's kind of like Christmassy-ish, which that is not the right blue. Um, something more along these lines, like a snow blue, really light and mute, something like that. Um, which doesn't look too half bad, but let's go ahead and hit okay. And you can see that obviously our entire background has got that, that light blue. Now our other option, well, we actually have, we have two other options, but the other option that it gives us right here outside of solid color is we have our environment option. So with our environment option, if we go to our environment library, we have all these different options and there's more that you can load. You know, you can go to attach custom environment and attach what's called an HDRI, but using the stuff that they have, same with our materials, you just drag and drop. So like, say we wanna be in the plaza, if we drag and drop this out here, it's gonna take a second to load and it's gonna give us that plaza environment. And <clears throat> if you rotate around, you can see that we're, we're smack dab down in the middle of a plaza and when you go over to the settings and change your position, this is how you kind of change, you know, where you're at within that environment. So if we go back to our environment, uh, let me exit this position thing. If we go back to our environment library, you can see that you've got the plaza and you've got a couple like real world-esque places, but then you've got other places that look like, you know, they've, they've just got lights set up, like right here, our cool light. So it's kind of like a photography st studio setup with just 
lights set up around you know your object which are meant to you know be professional lighting settings so those are kind of our options when it comes to the environment settings now if we go back into here we can once again we can remove that ground plane to get rid of that shadow now here's the thing that i wanted to show you um and th this will kind of help wrap us up into our finalized i guess uh our finalized product is creating our own background so <clears throat> for instance let's go back over to settings um or in uh let's see yeah and we're going to change our background to solid color again now this looks this looks okay whenever you render an image like this even if you, like you have a little shadow or something and you can change the brightness so we're at a thousand right now let's see what it looks like at 800 eh, 900 i guess a thousand didn't look too bad but it looks okay, but often renders look a lot better if the background has a little bit of a gradient to it. It kind of makes gives gives the whole thing a little bit more depth and a little bit more pop. So we're gonna create our own backdrop that will will make that gradient for us. So what we're gonna do really quick is we're gonna go back into our design workspace and we're gonna create another object. So we're gonna go to create sketch and we are gonna click on our Let's click on our ground plane. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a big rectangle, kind of like what, what will simulate like the floor. And then, yeah, let's just do this quick and dirty. Uh, and then we're gonna hit E for extrude, and then we're gonna extrude it down. We'll just go like minus five. It doesn't have to be big or anything. And then we're gonna hit uh, C, to draw on this surface and then we're gonna just draw some sort of arbitrary yeah we'll do 10 millimeters rectangle finish sketch then we're gonna hit e for extrude and we're gonna extrude this up see kind of what we're doing now we're creating a backdrop so last thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and add a fillet to this corner and we're just going to kind of pull it out somewhere around there. So that simulates a little bit of a backdrop. So if we go back into our render environment, <clears throat> now what I wanna do, actually, uh, let's let's move this over. Actually, what we'll do, we'll just hit E for extrude, bring this out, and then we're gonna hit E for extrude and kind of bring this out. That way we've got plenty of space to work with. Uh, and then let's go back into our render environment Then we're going to hit a for appearance to apply a material to our backdrop. So a for appearance, and then I'm going to right click duplicate this and then edit. And I want to go for that same light blue backdrop. So I'm actually, let me see, let me go into our scene settings and then this color right here. We've got 165, 222, 247. 165, 222, 247. 165, 222, 147. So then we're gonna go to here and then we're gonna edit this. 222, 247. And of course I just changed the wrong thing, but um, that's okay. So we're gonna put this onto here and then we're gonna put this onto our backdrop and I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go back into our scene settings and change this to white. And then as far as, okay, so right now it's not really producing much of a gradient. Uh, if we're looking at like our photo, it's definitely a little bit more of a gradient than it would be otherwise, but we're gonna go into our scene settings and we are gonna change around our camera a little bit, or not our camera, our lighting. So I'm gonna open up our position and then let me move the, oh, wish I could relocate this, but we're gonna change the rotation around and see kind of what that does to our backdrop and kind of how things look. See like right there, I think right there looks pretty good. I wanna see how it looks without the ground plane. See, that, that's another good thing too. So that's why I mentioned the ground plane earlier. I often don't use it because we'll have this, this backdrop so you can't really see the effects of the ground plane anyways. 
but let's change this. Now let's go into the environment library again. We've got this cool light setup, but let's see how different lighting setups affect it. So let's drag in our grid light. <clears throat> that has a little bit of a darker look. If we went back into our settings and changed our position and our rotation, then that would probably change some things, which that looks, that looks okay. That's not too bad. Um, but you see what I mean? That, you know, that, that gradient in the background, it's going kind of from a lighter blue up to a darker blue because of the lighting. And it just looks a little bit better than just having just a plain solid background. Real quick, I wanted to give a huge shout out to all of my Patreon supporters. Without their support, I would not be able to spend so much time creating 3D models or tutorials for you guys. So thank you so much to all of my current and past supporters and anybody else that has helped me out along the way. So let's get into the final thing, which is actually taking the photo. Now there's a couple different ways you can do this. And I usually go, I guess, like the quick and easy route but you can go in and you can actually render where you go into render and there's there's a lot of different settings and this is something that that i would encourage you to play around with but i've usually just gone on to here and done the stock settings and done went to standard instead of final render and rendered it and it actually like goes through a render engine but one thing that like honestly this like i mentioned in the very beginning this is gonna be quick and easy quick and dirty way of doing it. I usually just go up to capture image. I don't do a full blown render because as I also mentioned, I usually for my full blown renders and real renders, I, I usually do those in blender. This is meant to be the quick and easy way in fusion 360. So I go to capture image and then under here we can choose, you know, the size that we want the image to be, whether we want the background to be transparent or not. And then we're going to hit okay. And then we are going to go and choose where we want our image to be saved. So we're going to do that. And then that's pretty much it. Um, I thought there was gonna be one more window. That's why I was kind of like waiting for something, but let me go ahead and pull up our render and we'll see how it looks. So um, not too bad. And typically what I'll do is I'll just kind of, you know, crop the photo and, and do what I need to do from there. But looking at it, so it's basically snapping a photo dead center of the screen. So what we can do is we can kind of drag this a little bit more into position. If we want it to be smaller, then we can zoom out a little bit. And then if we go back into capture image and then hit OK, um, and then we're going to save it over that other image. Yes. Then let me pull open that picture. And there relatively centered, but you see how we've got kind of like that little bit of shadowing, that little bit of gradient. Um, I think that looks pretty good, especially for a quick and dirty render. Um, you know, obviously I would have been able to do this a lot quicker without, you know, going through and explaining the steps, uh, you know, in depth. But sometimes if, if I don't want to go through all the hassle, the reason I like Blender more is because there's just a lot more options, but with more options, you know, and you know, more things going on, there is a little bit more difficulty to it. Uh, you know, it takes a little bit more time. So this is a very quick and easy way to get a nice looking render on Fusion 360. And like I said, you know, some of those settings, especially the, the materials and the scene settings and stuff, I highly encourage you to play with them and just mess around. If you have any questions about it or anything, feel free to ask me, but this is kind of the way that I do my renders. So I hope you found some value in this video. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you on the next one.